hope all y'all are having a blessed day. As you can see behind me, I have this quilt finished. It is done. Fini. The end. <laughs> so stick around. I'll show you how to make the 3D border and how to sew the binding on and this quilt will be done. So let's get started. We are going to trim down the quilt to the block fronts. So we're going to take our rotary cutter and our ruler and trim the quilt down to the edge of these blocks. We're just going to continue all the way around the quilt and then I will come back. I have measured it 50 and a half inch by 40 and a half inch. These are the fabrics that I am going to be using. So we're going to have three layers in this border slash binding. We have the front fabric, we have the back fabric, and then we have the batting. And I am going to cut my strips of my border five inches, and I'm going to be cutting the strips of batting to four and a half inches. I am going to get that straight. This is 44 inches wide, so I need one for the top, one for the bottom, and then I will need three strips for the sides. And now I need to cut three more strips. Now I'm going to go do the same thing for the backing and then I'm going to be cutting the batting four and a half inches wide. I have short end here because my quilt is like 40 by 50 ish. So I have a short strip here and I am marking it as follows. My blocks are 10 inch. So every five inch I'm making a mark and I'm also making a mark at three inch because I'm making a picket fence. I am just putting marks on here. I have my batting layer on the bottom and I have the front of the quilt with the face up, right side up. And then I have the back of the border face down and I'm making my marks on here. And then I will draw the picket fence and this is the end right here. I will center or I will trim before I start sewing. I will trim this down so that I have a neat edge. And my peaks are going to fall at two and a half inch and then my valleys fall in between that. And I have the short end of the batting towards the bottom. And if your peaks are a little off or if your triangles are a little off, no one's going to notice. They will just be so amazed at the fancy border that you made. And if I'm wrong, you can get your money back. But I promise you this, if they see this border, they will just be absolutely amazed at what you have created. That no one is going to be pulling out their ruler and checking to see if your triangles are all perfect. They're not going to do it. I'm just going to make myself a, a mark here. And this is a, a Frixon pen. Ink will come out when you iron it and no one's going to see it. It's on the inside anyway. If you are the pin type of person, you can pin this as well. I will pin it after I've drawn my peaks and before I start sewing. You can, of course, create a template for this. If that makes you more comfortable, you could use some template plastic. We are going to sew directly on the lines and then we will trim one quarter inch away and we will also nip the corners a little bit. Okay, being honest, I sewed one line and realized, no, that's not going to work, dum-dum. So I went back and I remarked down one quarter of an inch all of the peaks. So we have a seam allowance up here. So it's real easy to pick up where you left off. You're just going to sew a new line and this other line you don't even have to worry about because it'll be in the seam and no one will know. 
so that is how we are sewing our borders together. This is the top and this is the bottom. And you can see that our batting is half an inch shy and that is going to come in handy when we are sewing this on to the quilt because we'll have less bulk in our seams. I have all of our borders sewn up and now it is time to trim them and we're going to trim one quarter inch away from the sewn lines. These can be lots of fun. Sew it, flip it inside out, and then stick it in a seam, and you'll have a three-dimensional little peak. So don't throw out those triangles. I have them. I have them all over the place. And it might be easier for you to use scissors on this. So don't feel like you have to use a rotary cutter if you're not comfortable with it. I will use a pair of scissors to get in close here. There's another fun little element. And if you're more comfortable using scissors, you can eyeball your quarter inch. I am going to trim the seam just a wee bit on that corner and on that corner, or I should say that peak, just nicking off a wee bit. Stay several threads away from the peak. And now, in these valleys, I'm just going to make a little nick. That's it. Again, staying several threads away from the valley. Now to turn this inside out, I am taking my thumbs in here to the peak and pushing it out. And then I'm using a pokey turny tool, technical term, and I am easing the point out. You don't want to go real hard because you'll blow right through your seam. And then you can use it to poke this one out so you have a squared edge. I'm going to do that all the way down the line. And if you have a stubborn tip like this, you can use a pin to go in there and grab the material and pull it out and then use your pokey tool. And you're going to roll this edge so that the seam lays down. And then you're going to press it with your iron and you're going to do that on all your borders. And when you press it, you want to make sure that the seam is on the very edge. It's not rolled over and visible from either side. I'll meet you back at the sewing machine when we get ready to quilt these. And I have changed to this lovely variegated thread and I have that in both my bobbin and on the top. We are going to start one quarter of an inch from the edge. Leave the needle down and pivot. Go slow as you approach the corner. And now we have these beautiful quilting stitches. And you can always use the hand wheel if you're worried about overshooting a corner or something. Here is our beautiful little quilting. And these stitches are just amazing. Now, before we attach them, we're going to attach them on the short side first, both short sides, and then we'll do the long sides. We are going to mark a spot in each corner of the quilt, three eighths of an inch in and three eighths inch from both sides. So one, two, three, and one, two, three. So right here, and you're gonna to wanna to mark it in ink that you can see. And now we're going down to the other end of the quilt. And once again, so you can mark a crosshair, you can make whatever kind of mark you want. And then we are going to put this corner right at beginning. Right there, three eighths inch, right at the dot. And we are going to sew with a three eighths inch seam, not a quarter inch. And by doing this, we will put our next border and sew it on also with a three eighths inch seam, not quarter inch. And then when that's sewn on and folded back, it will be right here. Now it looks like, well, that's stupid, Melissa, because now you're going to have a raw edge sticking out. Well, no, you won't. 
because even though this is a quilt as you go, it still gets binding. When you fold that over, you're going to be folding over that seam down. And because we didn't put batting right up against this seam, there'll be no bulk. There'll be bulk on one end, but not on other. That'll stay nice and flat. And on this side, when it folds over, it will look like that. And it will be a beautiful corner. Trust me on this when I say this. So I highly suggest that you make your dots as bright and shiny as you need so that you can see them. Choose white. Use whatever implement you need to give you that dot. Three eighths of an inch down and three eighths of an inch in. And we're going to sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam. My blocks are 10 inch, so I know that this is the center of my quilt and this is the center of my border. And I am going to pin it. Yep, Melissa's using pins. And then I'm going to pin it over here, right up to that dot and then pin it here. So if you have any fullness, you have to ease that in. And remember the trick. If you have a wee bit of excess, a wee bit of fullness, you're going to put your needle down and you're going to lift this. Put your foot down and start sewing. Don't pull, don't yank, just guide. But lift up in the air and your machine's feed dogs will slowly take in the excess. And by the time it gets to about here, it'll all be gone. So now we're gonna go do the same thing over here in this here corner. Even with the raw edge and right up to that little dot. And what I'm doing is, uh, remember this was only lightly fused down. So I'm just making sure that my pin catches that. And again, right sides together, raw edges together, and you can use as many pins as you want or you can use quilting clips. I am very delighted that my machine actually has a line for 3 eighths of an inch, but if you do not have that, we are going to put a line right where the needle goes down, and then we're going to count over one, two, Three. On mine, it lines up with that line perfectly. With your machine, I would suggest using a crayon or a wax pencil, something that is not like permanent. You don't want to use a permanent magic marker. You're going to make a mark that is exactly three eighths of an inch from the needle hole, from the center of the needle hole. And then you are going to put some tape on your machine. I love this quarter inch tape. Obviously, I'm not using it for the quarter inch purposes today, but you're taking a piece that's pretty near long enough and you are going to line this up with those marked areas that you made and you are going to lay it down like so. Rub-a-dub-dub -dub. and if you need this quarter inch marking tape it's a washi tape so the stickum is not permanent and doesn't make a mess of your machine. I have a link to this in my Amazon store. So if you go into the video description, you will get, you'll see a link for my Amazon store and you can go get yourself some of this. So we're going to go slowly. And if you have a walking foot, I highly advise that you use it. You can manage all of this bulk. Walking feet can come at a price, but it's well worth it to manage all of this material. And sometimes you need to just give it a wee bit of help in the beginning. And remember, as we get near this intersection, that's not tacked down. If you're like me. Now, if you're like a normal person, then you probably would have used enough fusible to make that stay down. And if you need some assistance, try wearing some quilter's gloves to give you some grip. And if you don't have quilter's gloves, you can try garden gloves, anything that has a bit of grip. And if you're gonna be sewing over your pins, do it gently and slowly. And if you have fullness, lift up the fabric. And as the feed dogs draw the piece in, it will remove all of the fullness for you. 
and you can see that we are right up to our dot which is right there so see how nice and flat that is isn't that beautiful look at that it is absolutely flat beautiful and then we are going to take our binding and it's going to cover this and I'm going to use this fabric so it's not as obvious sew your short ends on exactly as I've shown you and then we'll come back and we will match up the sides we have our short side on and this is going to be one of the long sides and I have it folded in the middle so I can match it to the middle of the quilt which will be right here I'm going to match that right like that and pin it down okay, and now we'll go back over here to this end and we are going to find our little mark so we get this nice little three eighths of an inch square there and that's what we want when that gets sewn and flipped it will be beautiful lining up our raw edges see that right on the money thank you jesus there is no fullness this whole whole way one thing that i'm going to do fold this back and get it out of my way and then we are going to march forward the same way we did on the other side and if you're sewing over pins make sure that you're going slow and easy again we're sewing a 3 8 inch seam and now we are zeroing in on the finish line here folding that back out of the way so look at that beautiful corner and when it is pressed backwards it will be covered with the binding and you will have a perfect corner i have pressed all of this seam what i've done is i've i've nicked the corners off i've just snipped off the triangles that were on here and i have ironed everything down and i have measured my quilt and my quilt measures from this point to this point it is 40 inches and then the long side is 50 inch that is 180 inches oh my goodness gracious people i just did math in my head so we need 180 inches i am going to prepare 200 inches two inch binding this fabric is 44 inches wide this is the perfect opportunity to use this stripology extra large ruler this thing is fantastic for cutting strips fast and accurate and with no boo-boos i have the bottom fold up against a line and i have gone over a line here and because i'm left-handed my numbers are backwards zero should be over here for me i am going to line this up it's now lined up with my cutting mat and it is lined up with the fabric and i am going to cut there so i have a straight edge i'm going to cut at every two inch mark i need five strips so i've cut here and i've cut at the 18 inch mark one two three four five and just like that my binding is cut and there's our cut off piece and that's one strip two three four five and now we put this away or if you're me you just make a pile somewhere so we're going to sew these all together and then we are going to take them over to the iron and iron them in half like this we will be sewing this on from the front and we will be folding this back like so so this is our border we're folding it back and we're letting all the raw edges hang out there and then we are taking the raw edges of our binding and we are leaving a tail and we are going to start sewing it on right 
along the raw edges and then we'll flip it over on the back and again it's a good thing we have not removed this because we will be doing a 3 8 inch seam that way it will go right over the stitch line that we already have and I am leaving a tail I have ample ample binding so I'm leaving a tail and I'm lining it up with the edge of that tape and I am going to start sewing we are approaching our corner we are going to fold this back out of the way like so and we're going to take a couple of pins and pin that down so it's not in our way and when we're pinning it we're making sure that this flap doesn't go over the sewing line we are going to sew a wee bit closer and then i will show you the next step right at that corner where the dot is we're going to make a nick in this binding one quarter of an inch deep and now we're going to sew right to that where we want the needle to land is right on where that dot is my dot's still there so sneak up on it you can even use the hand wheel if you prefer no one more stitch all right that's there so now we're taking our quilt and we are rotating it and we unpin this edge and we fold that up out of the way and when we fold that up out of the way notice what happens on the edge we folded this up and we have a miter let me move you in closer you see this pretty little miter that just happened that's because we flipped it up we were sewing straight like that we folded it up and now it has no other choice but to make a sweet little tiny miter there now we're making sure that the raw edges are aligned and we're not pulling real hard on the binding and now we're going to put our foot down we are marching towards our next corner again 3 8 inch seam slightly unconventional but it works now we have to fold these up and we're going to fold this back into a miter so that we can still see the stitching line i am going to go all the way down to right there where my dot is and i am going to make a nick one quarter of an inch And now I am going to sew just to that nick and I'm going to land my needle right on the dot. Foot pedal up and then we move the quilt. Now when we push this up out of our way, it automatically makes a miter for us. I am coming up to where I'm going to put the bindings together and some people like to do the miter cut and fold it over and sew it and all of that but i have never had an issue doing it my way i'm going to overlap these open this up and i'm going to fold up a nice edge like so and crimp that good with my fingers and then i just tuck this in And I run over the previous stitching a wee bit. The first side of the binding is done. I have ironed it up this way. We are going to fold this over like that. And if you're struggling, I can recommend trimming down this seam allowance to a quarter of an inch. But if it's not hindering you, you can just pin this down like so. And now I cut these corners off early. You can leave them whole so you can see your little 3 eighths of an inch square in the corner. You can leave that whole until this point and then trim it. So now this folds over nicely like that and there is no excess amount of bulk. There's a little bump here but it would have been twice as thick if we had not cut that batting half an inch shy. And again, if it's bothering you or if it's giving you a hard time, trim it to a quarter of an inch. 
and you're going to do this all the way around. When you get to a corner, you can use a pin, put the pin right here where that stitching line is and fold that over and you will have a nice fancy looking miter. And if this is too bulky, trim it back a wee bit. I'm feeling bulk. Just fold your binding out of the way so it doesn't get trimmed. Now it lies nice and flat and you fold that over and you got a really nice miter there. And then you're going to continue to pin and then I will meet you over at the sewing machine and we will top stitch this down. I will show you what I have done. I have folded this over like so and I have pinned profusely. When I have gotten to the corners, as you can see here, I have folded a miter and look at how beautiful those corners are. We are going to top stitch all the way around. As you get closer to the corners, you might have to do a bit of finagling. Now very carefully rotate the quilt without getting stabbed to death. I am not paying your medical insurance. So be careful because I am being poked right now. Ouch! Nice to the pins. <gasps> Yeesh. Wow. Okay, something screwy is going on with my machine. I am admitting defeat. The my my Singer 301 did not like the polyester thread, so I have installed my Bernina for the first time into this table and let me tell you this table is still a nightmare. I still had to pile paper underneath the machine to make it sit level because that shelf is not level. I have folded, I showed you earlier on the on the Singer 301, I showed you how to do the mitered corners and everything. So all I'm doing now is finishing up sewing down this seam and if you want to sew over your pins just sew slowly don't have a heart attack if you hear the pin hit the needle it scares me half to death and this thing is loaded with pins and what i'm doing is i am just removing the pins as i get to them and i'm just sweeping my finger just to make sure that these fabrics are tucked in nicely and I'm just about to where I started and I'm just going to run over it about half inch or so. I am going to get this up on the design wall and we will wrap this up. So here is our quilt all finished. I'm still going to add more quilting to it, but if you had quilted after you sewed the rows together, if you had gone back and quilted in the areas that were not quilted earlier, then you are done. But I am going to go back and I'm going to give this an all over squiggle with the variegated thread that I used to sew on the binding. And as you can see, it just looks like a nice row of stitching down here. It doesn't look bad at all. And we have all of our free points. And I just think it's gorgeous. I love the way the back looks. And I just love, love, love the way the border came out. So it's a great two-sided quilt. So I want to thank you all so very, very much for joining me on this project. And I apologize for the delay. What a great process this is. I highly recommend this process and I hope you will give it a try. It's not scary. It's, it's beginner friendly. It's easy. And even the 3D border is very, very manageable. I just really enjoyed the process. I will see you right back here at 70 Acres Studio with our next little project in probably about a week. Please do go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. And please do remember to give the video a like and please do leave a kind comment. Your comments just make my day. I have so much fun and enjoyment 
reading your comments and responding to you and getting to know you. And along that note, if you would like to have more access to me and behind the scenes and exclusive content, come on over to Coffee. The link is in the description and on the end screen. I have patterns for sale. I have subscription clubs. I've got quilts for sale. I have all sorts of things. If you are a subscriber over on Coffee, then you will get a 20% discount in my store. So please do consider that. I love you all very, very much. Please have a very blessed day, a very blessed week ahead as this fall weather suddenly hits. Today it is, it got up to 68 degrees and tomorrow it's supposed to be in the 30s so bundle up stay warm get that wood stove cranking and i will see you next time i love you all so very very much god bless good night elizabeth good night John Boy.